Alright, what's going on guys? It's Noah from Bossway Gaming here. Welcome back to a little bit different video than what I've made in the past. Um, so, I'm going to be showing you guys today how you can download the Gibbs Save Editor for either Borderlands 2 or the pre-sequel. And this video is pretty straightforward. It's not rocket science or anything like that but before I get started I just want to say first off that this is for PC only so Mac users uh, console users whether it's like Xbox one ps4 360 ps3 um, you're really not this video is not gonna help you guys out very much um, I don't even know if there actually is a version for Mac there probably is out there somewhere but I really just don't know how to do it this is for PC only and then in the course for the console versions I know that there is a way to do it um, for console users but I'm pretty sure that the way you do it violates uh, Xbox Live's terms of use, and I don't want you guys to end up getting banned for anything that I try to show you guys. For, for, so for the sake of this video, I'm just going to be showing you guys how this works on the PC. Um, there's, I'm sure there's other videos out there you guys can find if you want to try to do this on console, but just be just take my warning for it. Um, the way you guys do it, obviously you have to import your save from the 360 or Xbox One, however you do it, and then once you put it back on there, that actually... Uh, breaks the terms of use for Xbox Live itself, so I just want to make sure that that you guys knew that aware ahead of time. But um, for PS3, I'm not entirely sure, or PlayStation Network in general, I'm not entirely sure. But I would imagine that the same rules apply since it is kind of counted as like tampering and modding and stuff like that. But I mean, even though I don't really think of it as modding, but um, basically you're gonna to want to go down to the description of this video. It's gonna be like one of the first links. I think it's actually the fourth one from the top, but it's. It's H obviously you want to put an HTTP uh, forward slash uh, blog dot gib dot me and this is going to take you to the creators page. Uh, if you guys want to donate, his Patreon's over here. Basically, he uh, works really hard on this, um, making sure that all of it works fine and stuff like that. But uh, over here, it's going to have both of them set up for you guys. The first one obviously is Borland's pre sequel save editor, and then down here, if you want to download that one, you just want to click on download latest release from GitHub, and it's going to take you to the main page for that. Now, for the sake of this video, I already have the pre-sequels one download, so we're just going to download the Borderlands 2 save editor, and pretty much both of them function the same way. They are pretty much identical in terms of like use and everything like that. So we're just going to click on down here where it says download latest release for the Borderlands 2 save editor, and then that's going to take us to this page here. It's going to be on GitHub now. I know this kind of looks confusing to some people. I mean, it looks, it's not really that confusing. All you got to do is download um, this one right here, the Borderlands 2 10 point, or I guess it's 1.0.5 with symbols. Now, it might change down the road depending on when you're watching this video exactly, but uh, you want to click on the first one here, and uh, it's going to download a WinRAR or 7-zip file depending on what you have. I have WinRAR, so it's going to be on there. And then I'm just going to go to my folder here, where it's downloaded, we're going to drag that to the desktop. Now I dragged that onto my other monitor, so it's going to go away for a second. But here we got it on my main desktop. We're going to extract it to the desktop. And that'll take just a second here. And as you see, once we're done with that, you can just drag that to your recycling bin, do whatever it's done with. Now, this is the Borderlands 2 save editor. So we're going to click that open, click on bin. And there's going to be a lot of crazy stuff here. You just want to click on Handsome Jack. He's right here. So you just want to click on that, open it, and it should begin to open right away. Right there it is. Yep. So this is this is the actual save editor itself. And then basically how this function is, obviously the general stuff. You don't have any characters pulled up yet. So what it w wants you to do is to open up one of your characters. Now this can vary from person to person. I have different saves here. Um, now you're just going to have to go in the order of which that you have them or can memorize them at least. But you can also check them. It's not like you open one and then if you realize you picked the wrong one, you can just go back and reopen it. But we're just going to go with the first one here. I'm pretty sure this is my – oh, this is my Maya. Okay, well, that works st That works uh, still. Down here, um, let's say you can change the heads and everything like that. You can change the skins. This shows you how many experience points you have. So you can update that. You can update the experience level if you want to make that higher. Um, you can even change the class, believe it or not. I've never actually tried this. I usually just keep this stuff the same. I don't really um, try to mess with this too much because I don't want to screw up my game saves pretty much. But uh, you can change the overpower levels. You can change skill points, specialist skill points, so on and so forth. So that's just the main character tab there. General tab doesn't really have too much on there. Obviously, you can change it to the format and everything like that for it. But 
like I said, I don't touch this. I did, like I said, I don't touch this pretty much, so I wouldn't mess with it. Uh, you can change the vehicles. Now the currency stuff, you can change your Torque tokens, make that higher, make your Seraph crystals higher, your Iridium, your credits. Uh, you can change all of that stuff. And this stuff, I don't even know why it's there. It's unused, it says, so we don't even have to worry about that. Fast travel, you can show us all the different locations that you have unlocked. And you can choose to enable them or disable them, however you want to do it. I would just, you know, leave this alone. If you want to not screw up your save, I would just leave it alone. I mean, you can change this, but keep in mind that if it messes up your game, you know, you got to keep that, you want to keep that intact. So, but your backpack here, this is what most people go to starting out. Uh, now it shows you what weapons you have equipped and everything like that. Your weapons that are in your inventory, your customizations, relics, everything like that. So... Um, and these pretty much function, like I said before, these function the same way. So, like, I'll show you the Borderlands 2 save editor because I have it downloaded right there. But, I mean, I'll open this up bigger just so you guys can see it more. But, um, so, if say you want to create a new weapon or, not a new weapon, but give your, give yourself a weapon or give yourself a weapon. That's what a lot of people say um, because it's not really, you know, you're not farming the weapon and everything like that. Now, there's going to be different packs here. So, um, if it's just a vanilla game, you don't even have to click on any of these things. But if it's, like, say, from the Psycho Pack or if it's from the Bloody Harvest, any of these packs that you know of, you just want to click on that and it'll bring up that, uh, I guess it's the, you know, the, the items that come in those packs, pretty much. Um, there's correct terminology that for all of this that I don't really know of and I'm not going to bother even, you know, making for this video, but we're just going to do something for the vanilla game real quick. So obviously the set is the base game and we'll just start off with something simple. So say I want to give myself a legendary, uh, let's say the Maggie. So we'll go with a, we know it's a Jacob's pistol. So we'll hit, we'll click on the Jacob's pistol, the balance on this. Now it's going to give us all these different options. You can go with uncommon, rare, very rare. And then right there, usually most of the, the legendaries will have their own uh, unique or even the unique ones because they behave differently than the rest of the weapons obviously so uh, right here we can actually see right here at the very end it says Maggie so we're gonna click on that one and then obviously it's gonna give us only one option for the manufacturer because it's the Jacobs if we want to change level on it I forget the level of my character on this one already so we're gonna go over here it's level 18 so we're gonna go back over here just make it level 18 that's gonna change the level of the weapon itself the body, we have to go with Jacobs because it only gives us one option. Grip, we can choose any grip we want pretty much. So we can make this gun pretty much however we want it. Now, what I like to do in this, I mean, if I ever farm a gun and I get something like a different part that I want on the weapon, like say if I get an unkempt carol, but it's not the double penetrating unkempt carol, um, then I would change these parts out to make it so that way it is a double penetrating one. But um, here we'll just go with the different grips. I'm just going to stick with the Jacobs grip just to keep it basic. We'll just go with 100% Jacobs um, Maggie build right here. Sights are kind of irrelevant. So, I mean, it's all built around preference. Um, we'll just go with the Jacobs pistol or sight right there. Stock, it doesn't give you the option because it's a pistol. Um, but this will give you options for different stocks you can have. Now, there's no elemental versions of the Maggie. So, but this will give you the different elemental uh, properties if you wanted to have that. So, I mean, it doesn't let you do a whole lot. It's not like you can make a non-elemental weapon elemental or anything like that. This isn't really, I wouldn't say modding the game. It's just giving yourself guns or, and stuff like that, items that you won't have to typically farm for and everything like that. But you got different accessories here. Um, you got your bayonet, your accuracy, your double, your stability, damage. We'll just go with, I guess, stability because why not? Um... And then we have your second accessory here. It doesn't give you the option, but on the Borderlands pre-sequel um, save editor, this is actually where you put in your Loonshine bonuses. So um, guns that have this option will show up in here, and it will give you the different options for those if you want to give them a Loonshine bonus. Um, and then down here, it's going to ask you you know, what skin you want, so you want to go with the Legendary one. So it's really easy if you're doing just like a basic weapon. Um, you can do this with class mods. Like I said, up here, the shield item, that lets you make shields and class items and relics, I'm pretty sure, as well. But, um, and then you don't have to worry about typing in the prefix or the name. The game does that for you when you uh, save and go back into it. So we don't need to worry about that either. This will make this 18 as well. Um, you can change what slot you want to put it in. If you want to mark it as a favorite or trash item, you can do that. 
Um, but I'm not even going to worry about that. Now, over here, you can see that the gun is just sitting there as an unknown weapon, and that is fine. Like I said, when you go into the game, it's going to pick out all the stuff for you, so you're not even going to have to worry about it. And then, uh, at this point, then, the gun is pretty much made. So, what we want to do is, once you're done making all the guns you want, you want to make sure you go up here and hit Save. Click on that bunch of numbers then again, and it was our first save before, so we're just going to click on it again and just overwrite it. It's going to ask you, do you want to replace it? Just hit yes. And then uh, you can do this if you say you wanted to make uh, a duplicate save of the uh, same character, but you know keep one legitimate, keep the other one like gibbed, I guess. You can do that, but the only problem with that is, is that you want to change the name of the save file because if you leave it as it is, it's going to kind of screw up your game, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I've, I've never tried this, but I would just recommend changing the name of the save file to like say two or three or just one that isn't already in here if you can do that but um, just definitely do that I recommend it if you don't want to screw up your saves um, and then the game won't get confused or anything like that over here you can change the guns in the bank and you can uh, you know adjust all this stuff this stuff I'm pretty sure is just uh, like missions and everything like that you can change the active missions you can change all the different black market upgrades and everything like that just give yourself everything pretty much I'm um, not going to go into too much detail with this, but uh, you can go through here and like change what playthrough you're on, everything like that. And uh, it can mess up the game if you try to just give yourself everything at one time. So I would recommend just, you know, what I do at least, is I just give myself weapons that, you know, I don't want to farm particularly. Or if I've already farmed in the past and I just don't feel like farming again, this is what I go to pretty much. Or if I find the weapon and then it doesn't come with the parts I want, this is what I'd go to, pretty much. And then the About section, this just tells you about more of it again. So, we already saved, we already did everything like that, now it's time to open up the game. And uh, to do that, I gotta open up Steam first, so bear with me on this one, because I have not, I don't have Steam open right now. So, just give me a second to open more up games. Steam. Alright, so we're here. I'm gonna open up my... Uh, siren right here it's gonna be the first one so we're just gotta wait for it to load and open up now the one thing you do want to make sure of once everything is open here once we get in here actually pff, searching for downloadable content like there hasn't been an update for this game in so long come on all right so we already have our siren up here cool now just to be sure I want to make sure that she has everything, so I'm going to reload the save, and that right there is going to give you uh, the gun and everything like that. So we're going to the game. I really wish we were at the, uh, what's it called? But this will this will be fine. I mean, it's not anything different. So we go into our inventory, and then right there we can see the Maggie. So we got the Gunstock Maggie because we went with the stability and everything like that. It has all the stats. It's a level 18. Everything is like fine. It's basically unnoticeable from a regular version of the gun. So, like literally everything about it that we did inside the save editor has brought itself over into the actual game. So, like I said, guys, this isn't really modding guns. I mean, it is in a way modding guns, but at the same time, it's not, you know, super super complex. Like it's not rocket science or anything like that. So, but, um, you know, the gun, it's, it functions like a normal Maggie pistol would. Let me see here. You know, it shoots. It does all the stuff that a normal Maggie would do if you were to find one in the real Borderlands world. But, um, you know, that's pretty much it, guys. It's pretty straightforward. If you guys have any questions, I'll be sure to help you guys down in the comments section. Um, if you have any problems... Um, there is a way that you can reach out to the developer himself if you guys encounter any kind of like glitches or anything like that. I've never had any itch issues with the game itself or with the uh, save editor. So, um, but you can actually comment on the blog post and usually he can respond to you and try to help you out that way as well. But I will try to help you guys out too if you guys do come in any issues. And then, uh, like I said before, this is for PC only and this works no matter, you know, if you're doing it on Borderlands 2 or the pre sequel. Now, one thing I will mention, since uh, since it is a little bit different on the pre-sequel when you download it. Now, when you download the pre-sequel save editor, let's say here, it comes up as this. Now, it says Borderlands OZ 1.02. Now, OZ is basically 
code for Borderlands the pre-sequel. They didn't put TPS, which I thought would have been easy to know of, but uh, it comes as Borderlands OZ save editor. And then it works the same way. You go in here, there's the OZ save edit. And then it should open here in a second. It opened up twice, my goodness. And then, you know, right here, I can open up for my frag trap, which is the first one. I just deleted a bunch of characters. That's why I only have two on here now. But right there's my frag trap. Shows all my experience. You can go through and it's pretty much the same thing. Your moonstones, your credits, your backpack items, um, f building weapons and everything like that is exactly the same as it was before now. Um, so literally, it's it's literally the same thing just uh, for Borderlands the pre-sequel. It's set up the same way. It even looks the same. So that's a really great thing about it. But um, that is going to do it for this video, guys. I hope this video was helpful. And uh, if you guys have any questions, like I said, check out the uh, uh, comment section. I will be sure to get back with you as soon as I can. You can also comment on the blog post if I don't get there to that first. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like if it was helpful. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.